Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about my own weight loss journey and how I lost the weight that you can see. I'll put it in like the thumbnails, the before and after pictures. You can look at my Instagram as well because there's pictures on there. If you're new to this channel, first of all, welcome. My name is Sarah. I'm a medical doctor. I am a health and fitness YouTuber. I used to be overweight. Uh, not what you would call massively overweight. I wasn't obese, but I was uh, overweight. I weighed 70 kg at my heaviest at five foot three and a half. I essentially lost around 8 kg from my heaviest and um, at 70 kg to around about 61 62 kilograms and in this video I'm gonna tell you exactly how I did that if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment click subscribe for more videos every single day of September and like for the rest of I don't know foreseeable future and don't forget to join me on Instagram and Twitter to keep in touch and be my internet friend so just a quick little background of my weight gain weight loss story. So I trained as a junior athlete, I stopped training for athletics, I gained a lot of weight very quickly at university, um, I'd stopped exercising regularly and I found myself in a situation where I was overweight and I didn't know how to lose the weight because I hadn't been in that position uh, before. Um, so I tried a load of different diets, I did, I think I did the Atkins diet, the one where you eat just protein, um, I did the just no food diet which seemed to work really well for my sisters but just didn't work for me at all, like literally where you just don't eat. I can't I can't even express to you how ridiculous this stuff is basically just like any normal person trying to lose weight I tried a load of different quick fixes and I say this really casually and really quickly but honestly it was it was really stressful like every event I'd have coming up I was like I really want to lose weight before this and I'll try something and I wouldn't I remember like distinct moments of like being really emotional about my weight. So like, I, I know that some of you watching this and probably thinking, oh, but I'm a lot heavier than you, but you know, it, it's different for each person how it affects you. But I remember being super emotional about my weight and like crying and promising myself that I was gonna like eat healthily and then binging like a couple of hours later. And it was just this really like all consuming thing. It consumed me. It's weird even looking back how much the idea of weight loss really consumed me. Wow, that's mad looking back. I'd forgotten about how obsessed with my image and my body I was when I was trying to lose weight. So I tried a load of different methods and nothing seemed to really work. Um, and that was when I took things a little bit more seriously. I'll tell you the things I specifically did, but I'm also gonna narrow it down and tell you kind of the, the ethos behind the things I did and why it worked. First thing I did was I stopped rushing. I stopped looking for quick fixes. So I took the time limit off, essentially. I just completely took the time limit off. I, I realized that all the two week diets, the three month diets, the whatever diets I tried didn't work because I was still fat after all of my Duke and diets, protein only, fasting, all this stuff. Three weeks later, guess who's still fat? Me. I wasn't fat, but you know what I mean. I was still not the weight that I wanted to be. So I decided, like, screw that. I wasn't going to do a short-term fix again. And the second thing I did was that I changed my mindset, which kind of came along with the first one, which was I stopped looking for results, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous. But I almost stopped focusing or I, I did actually I stopped weighing myself I stopped focusing on the results because what I found was that I was focusing on something that I couldn't control at the end of the day or I didn't know how to control I didn't know how to control whether my weight would be four pounds lighter the next day or four pounds heavier depending on how much water I drank or depending on how whether I was starting my period and, and all these other things that can affect your daily fluctuance of weight so I stopped focusing on that. I stopped weighing myself. I stopped measuring myself. I went from taking progress pictures weekly to not taking any at all. And I took all that energy and all that focus that I would spend praying for results and waiting for results. I took all of that and I started focusing on my input. So instead of focusing on the output, I started focusing on my input. And I can't tell you how much this revolutionized it. Instead of asking myself, did I lose a pound this week? Do I now fit into that dress? What I would ask myself was, did I stick to my eating plan? Did I complete my session at the gym? Did I give my all in that session? Did I add the extra oil to that meal that I didn't need to add? Did I go to McDonald's for breakfast, which I didn't need to do? What is my input? Because that was the only thing that I could control. If failed diets taught me anything, it was that I can't control the output the way that I wanted to, the way that I prayed, the way that we all pray that we could, that we could just flick a switch and we wake up looking like Beyonce or Naomi Campbell. But that's just not the reality and I spent 
enough time trying to change that reality until I simply accepted the truth, which was that I can't control the output, but I sure as heck can control the input. What I decided was that I was going to control that input so freaking well until science itself would have to be revoked for me not to see an output. Do you see what I mean? I was like, at the end of the day, one plus one equals two. If I'm not getting two, it's because I'm not putting in one plus one, or I haven't been putting in one plus one for long enough. That doesn't make sense mathematically anymore, but you know what I mean. Um, so I completely changed the focus, and the only thing I focused on was on input. And I think that that made me able, mentally, to do what I needed to do. Because I think at the end of the day, most of us know what we need to do in order to lose weight. What we lack is the ability to do what we need to do in order to lose weight. Am I right? Like, at the end of the day, you, you eat healthily, you exercise more, bish bash bosh, easy, until it comes to actually doing it. And suddenly you find that there's all these emotions attached to it and habits and, and friends and, 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 and like, self-confidence all these other things get involved and suddenly losing weight isn't just one plus one equals two it's one over three to the power of tan sine cos wow i've forgotten all my a-level maths <laughs> So that was the second thing I did. The third thing that I did was that I created accountability. Now, I mean created. I literally created a fitness society. I made myself, <laughs> I made myself the president of Fit Club. Do you know the levels of accountability I felt <laughs> when I would walk up to people and be like, do you want to join Fit Club? Do you know what happens when you present yourself and say, hi, I'm Sarah, I'm the president of Fit Club. People look you up and down and check how fit you are. So I had this gaping wall of accountability. It's sometimes so much easier to do things to impress others than it is to impress yourself. I find that even for things in life like keeping my flat tidy do you know how I keep my flat tidy is that I constantly invite people around because I know that I will tidy up before they come whereas if it was just me in this place if I was the only person who saw this place this place would be a tip okay so I created that sense of living up to other people's expectations by setting an expectation that hello I'm Sarah I'm the president of Fit Club and I had to live up to that and um, and I wanted to more because I, I we care as people about what other people think so I created accountability by <laughs> starting a university uh, fit club society that I would not only have to lead classes at but represent um, physically, visually, emotionally and lifestyle wise. Like if people kept seeing me just eating constant pizza, 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 they'd be like, mm, yeah, fit club or fat club, who knows. Um, and second of all, I started going to the gym with my best friend at 5am most mornings, about four to five times a week. Uh, minimum would be two to three, maximum would be five times a week. Going to the gym every morning at 5am with my friend meant that there was someone there waiting for me at the gym. I didn't want to let her down, I wanted to spend time with her. That accountability of the fact that I've made an appointment, not only with the gym, because the gym's not going to know if I do or don't go, but with a best friend. She's going to know if I do or don't go, and she's going to talk about it. And I don't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to let her down. We, we got so close, like, oh, I love us a bit. Love you, Katie, if you're watching this. And what was that? Number three. The fourth thing I did was the 5 a.m. gym sessions. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, sorry, you just said that. Um, but I said about accountability with that. And what I want to say is about the specific time of 5 a.m. Now, the reason I did 5 a.m. gym sessions is because, number one, no one ever interrupts your 5 a.m. gym sessions unless you've got a newborn baby but if you're living the average lifestyle working nine to five then 5 a.m. is a very unwanted slot if i go to the gym in the evenings there are things constantly coming up that will try and prioritize over that slot like church band friends birthday dinner gig event I mean, my social calendar is not that heavy, but simple things like an on-call, my on-calls at work won't finish until 10 p.m. And choosing that 5 a.m. gym slot helped me in so many ways. Number one, no one ever interrupted it because no one wants to go for brunch at 5 a.m. Who wants to hang out with someone at 5 No one. So that was always a clear spot. Number two, you tend to focus best on the things that you do first. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, but Sarah, I'm not a morning person. I'm of the personal belief that everyone's a morning person if they go to bed early enough. And um, so I focus really well on what I'm doing first thing in the morning. I'm able to give it my full attention. I'm able to go for it with drive and passion. And actually, for example, during exams, I didn't go to the gym first thing in the morning because I wanted to take that passion and put it into my revision time. So that way I get all the benefits of a fasted workout. And last of all, it meant that I only had to shower once um, in a day. So <laughs> instead of waking up, showering, going to work, going to the gym, showering, I could wake up, go to the gym, shower, go to work. If you get what I mean. If you want more information about my 5am gym routine and why I do fasted workouts, then I'll put like some 
there. I think I did two videos on that and I'll put the links here and you can go and watch those. So that was the fourth way that I lost the weight. The fifth thing that I did to lose the weight was to prepare. I had to prepare. Now, I like to think of this, I know it's silly, but I like to think of this as future Sarah v present Sarah. It's super important not to rely on your future self, but your present self. Now what I mean by that is that you have to prepare. You have to prepare while you're motivated, like right now, and make things as easy as possible for your future self. It is so easy when you're in the whim of something to make a snap decision and go for the unhealthy pizza. Um, whereas if you've made that decision in advance while you're motivated while you're keen and prepared your meals so that the healthy meal prep you made only takes five minutes in the microwave and is actually quicker and closer than the pizza which will take 40 minutes to arrive you will enable yourself and empower yourself to live your healthy lifestyle and put in all that input the right input that i talked about at the start which will eventually and i say eventually because it takes time no quick fixes here eventually get you the output that you want so i started meal prepping not in an extreme way just if I was making one meal I just make two so when you're making dinner just make two put one in the fridge one in the freezer or like eat one put one in the fridge or the freezer do you know what I mean and those are the five main ways in which I achieved my weight loss it wasn't easy but it got easier as it went along nothing good in this life is going to be easy if you're watching this thinking I'm going to give you some easy tips to lose weight sorry sorry I'm not, you know, I'm not God. I can't recreate science. Your body is what it is. It takes its time to adjust. You're not going to change 20 years of lifestyle habits in two weeks. I'm sorry to say that. Trust me, I've tried. If I knew a way, I would tell you. I would tell you, I promise. But there's no way to do that. It's hard. Stuff is hard. Like, becoming a lawyer is hard. Doing anything worthwhile. Raising a child is hard. Anything worthwhile is hard. You are worth it, though. You're worth it. Either way, a year from now, you're going to be a year older anyway. You may as well be a year older and your own body goals. It took a a long time of consistent input um but it was absolutely worth it and the great thing about it is that it gets easier like i remember when i started getting back into working out and i just hated it man it sucked i was like this sucks how did i used to do this six seven days a week like it sucks i'm tired i want to go home i'd rather lie down with a bag of popcorn and netflix and um, but the more that i forced myself to do it the easier it became and I found myself wanting to do it. I found myself craving workouts, craving the endorphins, craving healthy food. I found myself wanting vegetables instead of sweets. There was a point where I didn't like sweets. I kind of, you know, eased up a little bit on that, but I didn't like them because of the sugar rush. And I was like, oh, this is weird. Like, I got to that point. It's possible. If you knew me before, that's a miracle that I got to that point. What I'm saying is that it does get easier and you will love it. You just have to power through the crap bits. The way that I think about weight loss is that it's kind of like when you're younger and your mum makes you take a shower and you're a bit like, oh my gosh, mum, I don't want to take a shower. I had a shower yesterday. But she makes you take a shower or a bath or a bucket bath. Let me know in the comments if you used to have bucket baths. Holla! <laughs> um yeah she'll make you take that bath uh because she knows it's good for you and then you carry on taking those baths when you don't want to brushing your teeth when you don't want to and you get to the point where one day you wake up and you think oh i need a shower and you you want a shower that thing that you hated for so long that you didn't want to do you want not necessarily because it feels good maybe it still feels the same as it used to feel but because you know how it's going to make you feel you know the kind of life it's going to enable you to live a non-smelly life with fresh armpits how blessed you know that and so you do it and then even on the times where you don't really feel like taking a shower i've had it when i'm trying to get ready for something i'm like oh i can't really be bothered to have a shower but i get up and have one because it's a healthy good habit that is ingrained in me now to keep myself clean and smelling good um, and I think it's the same with exercise when you first start off you'll be like oh not today Satan but the more you do it the more you push through the more that you'll find that this exercise is good for you and you'll end up craving it even when you're on holiday who showers when they're on holiday me who works out when they're on holiday me because I love it and I've learned to love it by pushing through okay I've gone on for long enough now that's it thanks so much for watching you guys I love you so much please don't forget to leave me a comment let me know what you think let me know your favorite of the five points of this video which one applies to you which one are you going to try and input on your weight loss journey thank you so much for watching don't forget to leave me a comment share my channel with a friend yeah I will see you guys in my next video love you so much bye